All right, what's good? It's Worm, and in today's video, we are gonna be talking about Trial 1 and how you guys can easily beat it every time. Now, as we all know, Trial 1 is the place where you can start the game with a great boost of levels at no cost to us. The only issue being the several challenges that you have to face in the trial. I've had a lot of friends come to me super frustrated that they can't beat the trial looking for assistance. So luckily for you guys, I'm going to be going over all the enemies you will face in trial, their attack patterns, and tips you could use to beat the trial super easily. So first, let's talk about what Trial 1 is. Trial 1 is of course a trial located in the basement of the Ministry Base. You can access the trial by traveling there or by selecting the origin in the character creator. If you want to get the origin, you have two options. The first and original way to unlock it was by beating the Thresher in the trial. But unfortunately, that was too difficult for a lot of people, so the devs added a second, much easier way to unlock it. Upon your first time wiping a slot, you will unlock the Lone Warrior Origin, which allows you to spawn in the trial from the main menu. Along with spawning in the trial, you will get access to the shrine located on the far back wall. This shrine works in the exact same way all mystics do around the map, letting you influence the cards and mantras that you get on your next card hand, at no cost to us. With these tools at our disposal, I don't see a reason as to why you wouldn't want to use this as your main origin. Now once you spawn in the trial, you will spawn into a long corridor. Once you walk down it, you will open a door and be greeted with a trial room. At this point, you can still leave and rejoin the trial if you have bad ping, so if you want a better server, just leave and rejoin and you'll respawn back at the entrance, after which you can walk right back into the trial. If you have completed one of the levels during the trial though, you will not be allowed back in, so make sure you have decent ping before we continue. After walking into the middle, the start of the first trial will begin, and the first trial is parry orbs. These are really self-explanatory and are a great introduction to parrying if you are new. So just press F right before they get to you, and you'll be perfectly fine. After the parry orbs, we'll be allowed to go into the middle and invest our points to whatever we want. I do want to mention that if you have Autodidact or the Adret Race, you can get a ton of the points in the trial. I love using this to get levels for my Echoes farm, which I will be making a video on for you guys soon. But once we've invested our points, we will be facing the Sharko, otherwise known formally as the Megalodon. The Megalodon has 5 moves I can use during the trial. The first move it will always use on you is the double slash, in which the Sharko will swing its arms twice at you. This move is parryable, so once you get it down, it will be super easy to parry. After that, it will use a single slash and follow that up with a kick. The slash is parryable, but you will always have to roll the kick as it's a block break. The easiest way I find to fight Sharkos is to get a battle axe or a sword and hit them twice, then defend. After you just keep following that pattern, you'll be able to easily defend against Sharkos. Besides those two attacks, Sharkos can use the kick by themselves, which you will always need to roll, the Coral Spray, which you'll need to parry, and the Roar, which only gives you insanity, so you don't need to worry all that much about that. After you get down not getting hit by the kick and prioritizing defending, we can move on to the Golem. The first move the Golem will use on you is the Slam. This is parryable, and it's pretty consistent, and after that, it will start to charge its laser. You cannot parry or block the laser, so you will have to roll it at the last second. You will want to wait just before it fires it, so you can roll it at the last second, as if you roll too quickly, it will still be aiming at you, and it will still fire. After the Golem fires its laser, it will most likely use its swing, which is also a block break, so you will again just have to roll this just like the Sharko Kick. Besides that, the Golem can use a couple other moves. The next one is the Spin. You can parry this Spin, and you can actually end one while you're parrying it at the same time for free damage. The Golem also has a stomp which you can also parry, and it's the last move which is the Roar, which causes a bunch of rubble to fall from the ceiling. This move is pretty uncommon, so if you do get it, don't be mad, you kinda just got a little bit unlucky. The Golem is very similar to the Sharko, as you mainly just don't want to get hit by the swing, and with that you should be fine. After the Golem, we get to the Thresher, otherwise known as the easiest monster to kill in the game. It could just be the fact that I'm a Flurry and I've wrestled Gator since I'm a kid, but besides that, I find them to be extremely easy. The Threshers have 4 main moves that you want to look out for. I start the level away from the platform to always make sure they use their first insane move, being Beast Burrow. Once they do this, you'll see a blinking red dot which will appear and it will show where they currently are. To avoid this, you can wait for 2 blinks, then roll, or if you want to, the second you see it, you could just roll to the side and they won't hit you as they're pretty stupid. After this, you have 3 moves that you need to worry about, but luckily for us, they are all parryable. The first move is the Bites, which the Thresher will try to bite you 3 times. After that, it can use its Slash move, in which it will try to hit you with 2 slashes, which are also parryable. And lastly, it will use its Tail Swipe, in which it will charge up a Tail Swipe and then hit you with it a second later, so you want to wait to parry this one. So once you get those 3 moves down, the Crocs will be one of the easiest monsters to kill in the game. They are extremely consistent and they are super easy. After the Crocs, we get to the Angels, which are now arguably one of the hardest parts of the trial for most people. Mainly for the fact that there are 2 Angels and they basically act like players. Now, all of the moves that Angels use are parryable, so you don't have to worry about rolling. Now, Angels of course can M1 you and use criticals, but they can also use their special ability being Light Piercer, in which they shoot down 4 bolts of light that explode on you, but are easily parried. After those, there are 4 other monsters that they can use that the players are also able to use, being Gaze, 
Glare, Exhaustion Strike, and Dash. Luckily, all these are parryable, but they are all hard to learn. So you have two main options for fighting the angels if you aren't good enough to parry these. The first option is actually being able to learn to fight against those mantras, such as I'll show real quick. You can of course parry trade and lock in, but most people find this really difficult, so I have a slightly easier option for you. There are two matches you can use to easily kill these angels. The first of which being Strong Left. This is a great block break and it can help you create some great distance in between you and the angels. Another match I'll go into is Fire Blade. Now Fire, as we all know, has the ability to burn corpses and angels have the fun little mechanic that we can abuse. If one angel dies, the other angel will automatically die shortly after. So if we just knock one angel and burn it, we'll be able to pass the angel trial with ease. So that's why we get Fire Blade. Fire Blade is a great block break move that can also burn the angels to death. So if we just focus on one, use Fire Blade on it a bunch, and then get it down and burning, the other one will die just easily. If not, I have another little trick you can use. If you want free damage on the angels at the beginning of the trial, you can use their crit right before they spawn in. The angels will spawn exactly 3 seconds after the dialogue box disappears right before the angels. So if you use your crit around 2 seconds after that dialogue box, it will hit the angels right as they spawn in. Hitting them with a critical like the battle axe crit will also get them to be knocked down so you can get an extra M1 on them. And sometimes, in certain situations, this will allow you to easily kill them in 2 hits. But besides that, if you do have block breaking monsters like strong left and fire blade, you can of course just run around and spam those monsters until they both die. If you beat the angels, congratulations, you have passed the arguably hardest part on the trial, so give yourself a pat on the back. You have only 3 more monsters, and then you are done. So after the angels, we will be facing the enforcer. Now the enforcer is actually pretty easy as you're able to parry all of its moves. All of them are really simple and I want to give you some tips. The enforcers do however have the ability to faint and this is what makes them hard. These faints can mix you up big time. So what I do is when I see an enforcer faint is I will always immediately roll. If you roll when you see the faint, you could get back into parry trading and killing the enforcer right after. One tip I would like to say with the enforcer, if you parry it 2-3 to three times, its posture will most likely be full and then you can use your critical to block break it and get a free hit on it. If you just keep repeating this, you will have an easy time killing it. After the Enforcer, I would like to say we had the second hardest enemy in the trial being the Stone Knight. The Stone Knight is like a bigger, harder Sharko, and it has two moves that you will need to roll, but it also has two moves that you can parry. The first move that it will use is if you're far away from it, it will use Wind Slash, which is like a blade of wind, but you can also parry it. After that, it has its slash attacks, and it will have two variants of them. It could do one slash which you could parry, or it could do its first slash and then follow up with a secondary slash right afterwards. You could get a free hit off in between these slashes as they aren't super hard to parry. Then we have two annoying moves being the kick and the stone pillar. You could always just roll these two moves but sometimes it could use them right after each other, so you might be in trouble if that happens. If you do get hit by the kick or the pillar, you could spam right click to unragdoll yourself. This is a very good tip but unfortunately this does not work on the Sharko so if you do try this, it won't work. But it does work on every other enemy in the game. But once you eventually beat the Stone Knight, we have two more levels. The next level is just more parry orbs, so just spam F and you'll be fine. And after that we are left at the final trial, being the Alpha Megalodon. While you fight this, you will also be attacked by parry orbs at the same time, so I want to give some few tips. The Alpha Megalodon has very low health, so you only need to hit it a few times for it to die. I'd say it's about 5 or 6 times, so you want to focus on defense. When this mode is active, the parry orbs won't do posture damage to you, so if you need to, you can block them. I always start in this order. I will parry the parry orbs, M1 to Sharko, parry the Sharko, M1, and then parry the parry orbs, and then I continue this until it dies. Don't back away from the Alpha Sharko, however, or else it will go invisible and use its tacit move. This move will block break you if it uses it, so you need to roll it. But besides that, once you get this down, it's as easy as pie. And with that, you have successfully beaten Trial 1. And with more practice, you will be able to easily beat Trial at any time, and you'll probably be able to even do it with all Echo modifiers. If you guys are interested in Echo Farming, that will be one of my next videos, so stay tuned. And if you're wondering why I'm back to Echo Farming, I did unfortunately get banned for something I said over two years ago, but we stay strong. I plan to keep making videos for you guys as I love helping you guys, and I love helping people learn and get past their troubles. But besides that, if you guys did enjoy, be sure to like and subscribe, and I love your support. So if you guys do ever need help, my Discord is open, and my DMs are also open. But with that, I hope you all have a good day.